Welcome to Touch Technology Review today, a productivity tip on how to edit audio using Adobe Premiere Pro CC. In addition to that, as a extra part of the tutorial, I'm gonna run through a couple of different approaches to optimizing audio for your YouTube videos. So let's jump into the first part of the tutorial, which is the best practice for editing audio. For those of you that have been editing with Adobe Premiere Pro CC thus far, I'm sure you're applying your effects to the individual clips on the timeline, which at first seems like the most logical way to go, but there is a better way, and that is by using the track mixer, which allows you to apply effects on a track by track basis, rather than applying them on each individual clip. Now you might be wondering what the difference is and why it's beneficial to use the track mixer. Well, I can give you a number of scenarios, especially when you're editing longer videos, and that has to do with editing multiple cuts in those clips. Now, if you have a half hour podcast or an hour YouTube video, you might find that you could have 50 to 100 cuts in the timeline. So if you go and apply your effects in audio in the early stages of production and find later on as you're editing that you need to make changes to that audio, then you need to go back into each clip and edit the audio again. Sure, you can use copy and paste, but you, you run the risk of potentially missing a clip and the result can be that you have uneven audio. Another issue that often arises is when you use audio noise reduction and it can often be quite noticeable when you jump from clip to clip that you've applied noise reduction. So to get around that, I'm gonna show you how to apply those effects onto the track mixer. Now, some of you may not even know that the track mixer exists because it's not always visible in your workspace. So to go and activate it, head over to the Windows menu on the top of the screen and select Audio Track Mixer and then there'll be a drop down where you can select the track mixer for the particular sequence that you're working on. So make sure you go and select that sequence. And now you'll see a track mixer appear on the left hand side of the screen. And this is where we're going to apply all of our audio effects. Now, if you can't see an option to add effects, there's a little arrow on the top left hand corner of the track mixer screen, and you'll need to activate that in order to see the effects panels. Now you can go and click on each of the slots available to add your audio effects. So that is tip number one for editing audio using Adobe Premiere Pro CC. Now, one of the things that I like to do before I even start editing my audio is to make sure that I've maximized the gain of that audio clip on the timeline. So depending on how you recorded it in the first place, you may or may not need to do this, but quite often most people will find that the audio signal is not loud enough in general. So in order to get the levels right when you're playing it on the timeline, actually have a look at the audio meter on the right hand side and have a look at what level it's going to. You're really aiming for around negative three, which is close towards the top just before it peaks to red. So if you're not at that level, click on the audio clip and then hit the G key. G will bring up your gain control and you've got a number of different options here for your gain. You can set your gain to a particular level. You can adjust it by a particular amount. You can normalize the max peak to a certain decibel level and you can also choose to normalize all peaks to a certain level. The way I go about it is to normalize all peaks to a zero or negative three level, depending on what sounds best. So have a go with those parameters, get the audio level right, and then we'll move on to the next step, which is applying those effects in the track mixer. I'm gonna show you the four filters that I use for my voiceover work 
when I'm recording YouTube videos and podcasting. These four filters rarely change. Sometimes for certain productions, I use others, but generally these are the main four. So we'll go ahead and apply them onto this audio and we'll listen to the before and after. The first one, if you need to, is to apply noise reduction. Now, when I'm using this Rode NT1, the quality of the audio is so high, I've got it plugged into the Zoom H4n audio recorder via an XLR cable. The quality is so high, it doesn't need any noise reduction. In fact, lately I've been using my Canon EOS R as an audio source for my vlogging and YouTube videos, and even that has a really low signal to noise ratio, and it doesn't even need any noise reduction. But I'm sure for those of you that are using different types of audio gear, you're gonna hear some noise in the background, and if you do, just go ahead and apply the noise reduction filter. After that, I like to apply some parametric equalizer. The parametric equalizer allows you to give you the best sound out of the lows and the highs all in one hit. So I go to parametric EQ and in the drop down menu, I select loudness maximizer. The next one is a compressor. The compressor will help lift the vocal out of the mix, in particular, if you have got any other audio in the project. It just helps really deliver a clean and punchy sound. And this one's really gonna rely on your own subjective interpretation of what sounds good to you because you can put a classical mix, broadcast, female male vocal, there's different presets in the compressor that are gonna to appeal to different people. So go ahead and experiment with these presets and you can manually tweak them as well using the sliders below. And the final effect that I like to use is the audio limiter, which is where I apply a boost or reduction to the audio in order to make it comply with broadcasting standards. I like to go to about a negative three on the audio meter, which you can see as you play the clip on the right hand side of your sequence window usually. You'll see the left and right bars going up and down when it hears the audio source. So if it's hitting the reds too often, then it's gonna be clipping and it's gonna sound distorted. If it's well and truly down in the lower green region, then it's perhaps a little bit too low. So you want it somewhere in between the greens and the orange and not going into red. If it occasionally clips to red, you can listen to the audio and if it sounds okay, it'll probably be fine, but you just need to make sure it's not going into that red zone frequently and try and keep it well below if you can. So if you're aiming for around negative three on the audio meter, then you're gonna have a very punchy sound and it's gonna sound good on all devices, on laptops, TVs, mobile phones, and uh, that is going to give you the best possible sounding audio. So hopefully these tips helped you out today. If you've got any questions, feel free to put them in the comments box below. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Bye for now.